What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and what is probably my most requested video to date. Speed versus acceleration, a complete breakdown on off the ball, on the ball, how the players react and how they are fast. And we're also going to be talking about some new secret stat boots and how to pair stat stats together. We're going to be doing training guides and of course we're going to be talking about the new speed meta. So let's get straight into it man. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get on with it. So the first thing you need to understand, right, is the difference between speed and acceleration. So you can see here that we're using Kante for this very first clip, and then we'll kind of bring in a couple of different ideas. I'm not going to overcomplicate it, lads. Basically, it means that when you have a high speed stat, the player will move quicker off the ball when he doesn't have the ball. And when you have a high acceleration stat paired with a couple of other stats, which we'll get into, as you see here, and his physique, his awareness stats, and how he gets up and down the pitch and what kind of style of player he is, his height, his weight, there's a lot that goes into it. But the individual acceleration stat, as well as his dribbling, will control this pace, like as in Kante is gone. Now you will see Ribery, when I'm not controlling him here, will continue his runs forward with speed, right? When I get the ball back with him, it's acceleration. Now, as I said, you can overcomplicate it and we can make this a lot bigger than it is. We'll show you a clip in a second of a speed versus acceleration in one clip, right? With Cristiano here in a second. But don't overcomplicate it. Speed is off the ball, as you see here. When you have the ball, this is all acceleration. So we're going to do a little bit of a time trial here between Roberto Carlos and Harry Maguire, right? So it's going to be from the box of my own box in training mode up until this line here. And we're going to stop it. So 11.333, that is the time that we get there. Now, when you revert this back to Harry Maguire, and we're going to show you the stats of both of these players, this is all with dribbling. It also comes into you know, like the player's position, the player's style, his, his height, his weight. There's a lot of factors that come into it. But you can actually see there that it, there isn't massive difference between the players, right? You're still able to clear the length of the pitch in a very similar time. Now, it just depends on how much importance you put on speed and having that extra tiny bit of zip. I mean, you're not going to be running the length of the field with Maguire. We're being very um, dramatic with making this comparison. Where the acceleration stat really comes into its own is a lot dependent on how you play, right? If you do a lot of like stop start, acceleration, um, you know, from stop dead to going in a different direction, turns, fake shots, cancels, super cancels, a lot of this start of intricate, snaky kind of dribbling, right? That's when acceleration players will really come to their own, especially change in direction. It's minuscule, right? I would like to see a bigger, broader, more, you know, uh, discretion between the two styles. Obviously, Harry Maguire is not going to be able to dribble as effectively as Carlos, but when you get a player like Salah or Neymar or any of those kind of zippy wingers, right? It's very fast twitch movements. You're able to kind of cover a lot of ground at a lot of different angles, right? So when we take a look at Harry Maguire's stats here, bearing in mind that we already have that clip fresh in our heads, you can see there, speed 62, acceleration 55, okay? And then also with Carlos, Carlos is going to be maxed out here, right? So he's going to have 102 speed and 101 acceleration. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells me that we can very easily overcomplicate things without actually needing to. Speed is going to determine how fast the player is off the ball, how fast he is at chasing down the ball, how fast he is at blocking passing lanes, how much distance he can cover when he does not have the ball at his feet. If you're chasing with a DMF or a CB or a left back or a right back, or your AI is running without the ball into space as you're trying to trigger a couple of manual runs. Acceleration then is a mixture between how fast the player is going to go, how quick he's going to get up to that top speed, so you go from start, stop, start, stop. If you've got Sal on the wing and you're like stopping, fake shotting, super canceling and bursting in two different directions and doing a trick or two, you're going to notice a lot more rapid animations there. It's still not at the level I would like it to be. I mean, if Mbappe is running at Harry Maguire in real life in a straight line with the ball or without the ball, it, it, there's only one, there's only one real um you know actual end game to that as well but yeah that will get you through a lot of stuff right acceleration how quick the player can get to his top speed and also how fast and rapid he is on the ball but still i think speed overrides a lot of that even with slower defenders when you see van dyke catching mbappe so it's all about using the players at your disposal and understanding that you just have a minuscule advantage if you've got max acceleration on the player so when we break this down here and we talk about distance covered and all about the different stats, player skills, individual instructions, physique, player ID, you can over overcompensate a lot if you've got a slower hold than DMF. But if you've got somebody like Kante, who we already saw, 
Watch the ground he eats up. It's like he gets a different frame or a different animation to be able to eat Modric up who's dribbling. And then on top of that, we also featured this clip earlier. And instead of focusing on Ribery now with his acceleration and his quick pace dribbling, we're going to focus on Kante and his run into the box, which is not tracked because he's too fast for the opposition. So you will see this time and time again as to where the game is at now. It's all about being able to map and react quicker to than your opponent to what runs are being triggered for you. There is no manual runs in the game, so you're depending on a couple of things that you can control, such as individual instructions, you know, box-to-box -box players rather than destroyers, and what runs you actually leave yourself open when you create the angles with the passing lanes. So when I cut in here, I know that Kante is going to cut in here. So it's just a case of being able to get at him. We get a bit of luck. Obviously, we get lucky with the rebound, and it's in the back of the net, okay? So it's all about being able to read it. Even this guy here, Beckham skins me. I'm out in the wide area with Vieira. I just cover the ground very, very quickly before he can get the ball under his control. Now, this is a brilliant example here of Ronaldo, okay? We're going to let this clip play through, and then I'm going to talk you through it. So Ronaldo just slots home. Watch Ronaldo's difference in speed. He's actually behind the licked here. He bursts past him. That's the speed stat. And also the fact that he's going to have high attack and awareness to be in those positions. Once I get in here, even with the shoulder charge coming in, my acceleration on Ronaldo is going to burst through. And when you look at his stats here, Ronaldo's only going to have 83 physical contact, 77 balance, but he's going to have that 90 acceleration. And that's going to be the killer for the licked because he's not able to react quick enough. And Ronaldo is just built in to be a stronger player in the game, regardless of stats. Obviously, 80 uh, physical contact is going to be more than enough anyway to hold off a challenge like that when he's, you know, a yard or two ahead of him, okay? So I did talk about earlier about the new speed meta. So I want to talk about this in a little bit more detail right over here. So you might have noticed that a lot of players now, especially top ranked players, are using a mixture of high speed and high acceleration center backs. Now, the reason for this is as follows. It's because of the changes that they've made. So if you take a look at the likes of Maldini, most of the destroyer center backs are now going to have minimum 85 speed. So you can like just do this very, very quickly here where we take a look at the likes of Maldini. We take a look, take a look at the likes of Aldair, who's going to have 85 and 85 each. Um, on top of that, most destroyers have high aggression. So once they get their sights on the ball, they're able to cover a lot of ground. Now, a fighting spirit is another one that drains your stamina less, but it also makes you a little bit more competitive and combative the player AI when you're letting the AI defend for you or you do a teammate press. But pretty much any destroyer center back here at the moment is going to have high speed and high aggression. So even with the likes of Jimenez, who was a free player, he's going to have that sweet spot of 85 speed. So that is why you'll see a lot of people using Raujo, Tommy Yashu, Bergomi now at the moment has got 90 speed and the rest of his stats in the 90s. And it doesn't really matter about the play style. Um, this follow tr follows true as well then for DMS. Pretty much any player that you want to win the ball back. Usually teams are set up in a way that you've got your five players or your four players that you want to score with or create chances with to create your, you know, openings. And then you've got five or six players that you want to defend with. For me with this squad, I defend and try and win the ball back with Kante, Tommy Yashu, Maldini, Bergomi and Barella. And then my attackers are going to be Carlos in a free Roman role. Obviously, I'm going to manually defend with Carlos quite a lot. But Mbappe, Forlan, Salah, Pedri, or any of my bench options, whoever's up, is going to, are going to be my killers. They're going to be the guys that I look to, to get in. Now, if you take a look at the likes of Van Dijk, a lot of people are using Van Dijk or Varane or any of those build-up type players to solidify that backline because the Striers are a little bit more um, kind of like home and missile that they just want to go in and get the ball, okay? But for the likes of Tommy Yashu and any of those players, 85 to 90 speed seems to be where it's at now. Now, there is kind of another, I suppose, debate going on about acceleration, right? It depends on your play style. A lot of people that use high acceleration stats on every player are the same type of guys that use one touch pass on a lot of their cards or double touch, where their game is centered around a couple of different patterns that they always try to open up. If you want a video on that and it creating, you know, attacking patterns and the four key attacking pattern, patterns in the game, let me know. But yeah, basically bringing it down to grassroots, that is what most people are using now. Araujo, Tommy Yashu, any player that's able to get into the 85 plus speed stat with the defensive stats, like not an issue. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also, this video has kind of been very defensive heavy. 
all you need to know is when you have got wingers or any players that you're looking to break the lines to carry the ball or anything like that i talked about secret stat boosts or, or, or secret stats that pair well together so if you take a look at the likes of salah i'm a massive fan of a player that can have four or five key stats being for salah here dribbling tight possession balance and acceleration finishing and speed and ball control are kind of a secondary requirement for Salah. Now, Salah's card is ridiculously overpowered and he hits all of those into the 90s as well. But for any of these players here, when you are training them up, you will notice that if you've got tight possession and balance alongside acceleration, not only will you be able to start stop if you do dribble a lot, not only will you be able to retain possession quite a lot, but even if you mix up your play and you don't play a lot of possession, it's still required, I think, to be able to get the ball into certain positions and to be able to use it, mostly in around the box. You might notice a lot of the time now that you're just getting blown out of games by just by pure speed defenders. And if you're coming up against top guys, you might not see this until you're in Division 2 or 1, but if you're coming up against top guys, they will have the speed down to a T and be able to nullify you even being able to get a 50-50 in your way. So I do feel that dribbling, tight possession and ball control with acceleration, those four key stats for any of your attacking players is going to be a massive, massive advantage to you. Now, people will go on about like finishing being 90 versus 85. Um, attacking awareness is also a key one, but I usually try to get that around the same the whole time. Now, you can see with Forlan here, Forlan is a different type of player. I'm not going to be running and gunning with Forlan, but if I want to run and gun, I might use Mbappe and train him a slightly different way. I'm not going to train him at 99 acceleration and 96 balance. I'm going to take up his tight possession. And what Konami have started to do with these players is they've started to slowly kind of let you hit those certain thresholds with a lot of different cards. So for example, with this, right, you can see very easily here, and we've barely trained Mbappe, we're going to have all his dribbling stats in the 90s, balance and acceleration in the 90s, and speed. So that's kind of where it's at. Now, with finishing as well with this Mbappe card, we can get Mbappe's card not to a 90, but it's as close to a 90 as we can possibly get it. So that's what they've started to do by balancing the cards. So Les, that is it for our speed versus acceleration breakdown video. If you guys enjoyed it, if you have any more questions, I think I covered pretty much everything. Listen, I don't want to overcomplicate it too much. I think I've covered the basics there and also to get you to a certain level. Yes, you can fine tune it. Yes, there are some like things that you can, you can kind of give yourself a tiny minuscule advantage of. But to be honest with you, when you can, you know, catch Mbappe with Van Dijk in game, right? There is a lot of stuff that are animation driven or gameplay driven or balance driven. Um, that just comes with part and parcel of it. The same way that if somebody downloads the game today, they're able to compete against other players, depending on who they have in their squad and depending on, how on, on, on their skill level. But if you guys enjoyed this video, this took me a long time to edit. So if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you could like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check back our live streams where we cover a lot of this stuff in more detail, do training guides on you know speed and all that sort of stuff and change it and research a lot of stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be back very, very soon and we'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.